We're going to be showing you how to change a Huey pump today. If you have a Cat 3126 C7 or C9, odds are likely it has a Huey pump in it. This is a very common failure point. Uh, to change it isn't very difficult, but um, I'm going to go over some steps with you here. Uh, also, you're going to need a specialty tool, but you probably already own it, you just don't know it. Also, at the end of the video, uh, I've got a... I've got a little video of showing a, someone that put a 3208 cat in a Suburban and uh, I figured anyone watching this video might find it interesting. So here's our Huey pump sitting right here. This is a 3126, that's Huey pump with a C7 style Huey pump. And the thing that holds it on are these two 10 millimeter bolts with 16 millimeter heads. And I'm going to show you what you need to remove. You need to remove the oil supply line to the Huey pump. You're going to have to remove the fuel filter housing. If the coolant line going to the air compressor runs over, you're going to have to drain the coolant and remove that. Remove the electrical connector. That is your high pressure oil supply line to the head. You're going to have to remove that. And there are two fuel lines. That's your fuel supply. And then your fuel supply to the head that run off the back of the transfer pump there, which is bolted to the Huey pump. Now that line there requires a special tool, and I'm going to show you how to remove that here. So on the left is the CAT special quick connect tool that costs about $30. And on the right here are die grinder tappet wrenches. And if you have tappet wrenches, they will work just as good as the special CAT tool. So if you have your special CAT tool or your free die grinder tools that most guys should have already, what you're going to do is install it into the Huey oil supply line. Now I've already removed the bolts and all the other components as you can see. And you just want to work it around to move the the uh, pin, or not pin, the, uh, the seal plate up which will then allow the, uh, the oil supply line to be removed. Also if you keep the uh, if you keep the fitting loose loosen the fitting that goes to it um, when you're doing that it makes it easier as well now be very careful with that oil supply line um, it is kind of expensive but the reason you need to be careful is because it bolts behind the air compressor so if the line cracks when you're removing the Huey pump you're gonna have to remove the air compressor to replace that line which is a lot harder than doing the Huey pump itself now be careful because the Huey pump is full of oil. There's probably about a quart of oil in there when you remove it. And I keep that uh, that steel line on. It just makes it easier than trying to pull it off when it's in place. So we have our... This is uh, engine oil pressure, this line going to it. And make sure you inspect it after it's removed because you don't have to remove that air compressor. Uh, like I said, that's going to... The air compressor removal will take a lot longer than doing the Huey pump by itself. So I've mounted our old Huey pump to a vise and removed all the fittings from it because you have to reuse them, reseal them, and put them on your new pump. Uh, I've also removed the Huey pump head and you want to drain the oil out of it first and remove that head and you want to inspect this little yellow area here. I'm going to give you a close-up picture in a minute. But um, don't ever remove the head on a pump that you don't want to change because the gasket here in the blue area I've highlighted is not replaceable um, so don't remove that head if you don't want to have to replace it so here's a zoomed up picture this is the solenoid inside that Huey pump and if you have a Huey pump failure you want to pull the head off the bad pump and inspect this area here on the solenoid for any metal debris if metal debris is there a uh, cat recommends you changing all the injectors and flushing the Huey system so here's our new pump we have our new o-ring we have installed. I've swapped all the fittings and resealed them. Uh, I leave that one empty just because it makes putting that other line on easy. Uh, new O-rings and I've changed this quick connect fitting because the old one was leaking. Also keep it loose. It makes putting the new line in a lot easier. And I'm going to put a link. I have a link if you do end up finding metal in the system for changing the injectors. Um, I've also got videos on how to change these injectors in the 3126s, C7s, and C9s. So I've resealed the small little fit in there going into the head. Uh, the line appeared to be in good condition, so we're going to reuse it. And we're going to slide our Huey pump 
in. And the first thing we're going to do is connect the quick disconnect line, or quick connect line, I should say. And these are, you know, these pumps aren't super heavy, but the, uh, whatever they weigh, 10, 15 pounds, they are kind of a pain sometimes. And it doesn't help that the area is tight for getting them in. Uh, some trucks that do not have air compressors, this is uh, twice as easy as doing it with the air compressor. So I'm inspecting now. See my light. I'm inspecting for the O-ring on the front of the pump. They're pretty good about staying in place, but I always like to make sure um, because last thing you want to do is have to pull this pump off. So still got my fitting loose, and I'm going to stick the line into the fitting. And once the line's in place, make sure it doesn't pop back out. So that is sealed. It should not leak. And then we're going to just get the gears to mesh with the gears in the front structure. Now, these are not timed. You do not have to worry about, you know, getting the engine on top dead center or anything. Uh, just, you know, insert it in. Just make sure the gears are meshed. And once they're in there, I always just give it a quick glance, make sure the O-ring didn't pop back out before I uh, uh, put the bolts in. Just a good thorough look. Because, like I said, you don't want to be doing this again. Not only that, if you damage that O-ring, I think that O-ring's about 10 bucks, so you don't want to get another one and put it on there. But they're pretty good about staying in place. So our Huey pump is now in place. I've installed the bolts, but not torqued them yet. Just these two 16 millimeter headed bolts. And those torque to 40 foot-pounds. After that, we're going to install all the lines you'd taken off in the filter housing. And it should look like this. I've painted it, obviously. So I've torqued the front bolts. I've installed our connector, our oil line, our high-pressure oil line, our filter housing, and our two fuel lines. Now, this fills up with oil, remember, so make sure you check your oil level after starting it. And you probably have to add about a quart to get it to the full mark. And just start it up and, uh, you know, check for leaks. Other than that, you're good to go. And here's the, uh, here's the Suburban I was talking about. This is like mid 70s Suburban, and someone has taken the time and effort of putting a 3208 non turbo cat engine in it. We've got a remote mount filter housing there. Uh, these engines are super heavy, too. I think they weigh something like 1,200 pounds or something. They don't make a lot of horsepower either. But I thought you guys might like to see that. It's kind of different. 